What's going on guys, the friendly neighborhood econ guy here for O-Level Economics. Last time we covered uh, theory of demand, theory of supply and the market equilibrium. Again, if you have questions, feel free to ask us because without clearing those concepts, you can't really move forward for the next chapter as well. The next chapter is called price elasticity of demand. And what we're going to be talking about is basically measuring how steep or how narrow the demand curve should be. To what extent should I actually be drawing a straight line on my demand curve or should I be drawing a horizontal line on my demand curve? That's what we're going to be talking about. And what that does is, that's basically the elasticities defined as the change in responsiveness of quantity demanded due to a change in price. Okay, fair enough. What does that mean? To what extent is because of a rise or a fall in price, my, is my quantity increasing? And by what proportion? So basically in price elasticity of demand and price elasticity of supply, we talk about the proportionate change in quantity demanded due to a change in price. Now remember, we're always going to be fixing price. So rule of thumb, queen over all else. Once you see this formula, you see the quantity demanded is up, right? And the price is on the is in the denominator. So queen above all else. The queen, quantity demanded, quantity supplied, anything is always going to be, other than price, is always going to be in the numerator. But this formula, how am I reading this? That's a percentage sign. That triangle over there means is delta. That means change. So percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price. Now flash back to the theory of demand lesson. What does the law of demand say? That as price goes up, quantity demanded will go down. Why? Because there's an indirect relationship, there's an inverse relationship. So whenever I'm finding the percentage change, always remember that there's going to be a negative sign involved. Whether that's because of the a percentage change in quantity demanded or because of the percentage change in price, the PED will always have a negative sign because of the law of demand. All right, always remember that. Because of the inverse relationship in price and quantity, there will always be a negative sign, but we don't take that into consideration. Remember to put it, but don't get confused by it. If you don't in your calculations have a negative sign, then you've done something wrong. All right, now you basically have two extremes in PED. One could be elastic and one could be inelastic. Now let's talk about elastic first. Elastic is basically, as seen over here, is a normal, relatively straighter demand curve. And that means that due to a small change in, in price, there's a larger change in quantity demanded. All right, I'm gonna repeat that. Due to a small change in price, there's a large change in quantity demanded. All right, look at the arrows. They're disproportionate. One is larger than the other. That means that my price elasticity demand is greater than one. Um, if, I calculate the, if I calculate this as a whole, if I put some numbers over here, I should be able to see that my price elasticity demand is indeed greater than one. Over here also, looking at these signs, don't get confused. Always remember that the arrow is going to be pointing at the smaller figure, which means that minus one is smaller than the PED. In other words, PED is greater than minus one. All right, now coming on the opposite side, what is the inelastic PED? What is an inelastic price elasticity demand? That is when the percentage change in price is greater than the percentage change in quantity demanded. Due to a small, due to a large drop in price, my quantity demanded is just increasing marginally. But the theory of demand also said that if price is going down, quantity should rise regardless. Yes, it is rising regardless, but it didn't say to what extent it would rise. Right? That's when we bring in price elasticity demand to determine to what extent should quantity demanded be increasing. Inelastic goods are going to be those goods which are necessities, which are habit forming, or which basically we can't live without. So for example, we need milk, we need water. So that means that we will be, those are goods which are going to be relatively inelastic or extremely inelastic. If there's no water, I'm, I know I for sure will die. I don't know about you guys, right? So I'm willing to, no matter how high prices might go for water, my consumption of water will just drop marginally. But at the same time, at the same time, if I'm talking about goods, let's say like a watch, yeah, if, I, if I'm talking about a Rolex, I'm wearing, I'm, wearing a, I'm wearing an average watch right now. I need to tell the time and I like watches. But if I'm talking about a Rolex, if the price of a Rolex goes from $100,000 to $2 million, I'm least bothered. I won't buy it at all. Hopefully I might buy one, but still. So that's when it comes into quantity. Well, that's when I'm talking about elastic goods. Those are goods which are easily substitutable. All right, and which basically are not necessities, which are normal goods, which are basically things that I might be able to live without. So another example of, um, uh, of inelastic goods are those goods which are basically necessities, like cigarettes, like alcohol, all right, like life-saving drugs. 
But elastic goods are those goods which we can live without, which we don't necessarily need in our day-to-day -day lives, and which are mostly luxury products as well. All right, take a, take a screenshot. I'm going to show you one more variation of elastic, elasticity. All right, so I've kept the definition on the board as well and the formula, so you don't forget that as I'm explaining. Now, there are other forms of elasticities as well, which are basically f an extreme version of elastic and inelastic uh, price elasticities of demand. Now, you need to understand these to basically interpret elasticity of demand and to basically find, now, in economics, you raise a lot of reference points as well, which are extremes. Now, one extreme is a perfectly elastic demand curve, which means that the demand curve is horizontal completely or also PED is equal to infinite or infinity as you like to call it or infinite for all you crazy kids out there. Now that means that at that price my quantity can keep fluctuating. I can consume more or less at that same price, I don't care. But the minute the price goes up I'll stop consuming that product altogether. All right, As price changes I'm done. I have no demand of that product. In a perfectly inelastic demand curve, that means that my demand curve is perfectly or completely vertical, my PED is going to be equal to zero. And that means that okay, as price fluctuates, I'm going to consume the same amount, regardless of what it is. If I need one life-saving drug, if I need a life-saving medicine, I need one tablet only, I don't care if it's going to be $500 or $5,000, I just need one. All right. So again, if I need two, that demand vanishes altogether because then, of course, the demand doesn't exist. And the last form of price elasticity of demand is a unitary elasticity, whereas PED is equal to one. And that means that the proportionate change in price is going to be equal to the proportionate change in quantity demanded. Again, the proportionate change in price, whether that's up or down, is going to be exactly the proportionate change in quantity demanded, whether that's up or down, all right? So over here, you need to remember that all of this comes into play. Why do you have to know this, Asad? Why, is this, why does this matter? Why can't we just live our lives with knowing what demand and supply is? Well, because when you're a firm and you want to sell something, if you want to make money, if you want to know how much your revenue might be, you are going to, know, you are going to want to know to what extent uh, will your revenue change if prices rise or if prices fall. If you're saying, if you're making laptops, you might want to lower your price to increase the revenue because those are elastic goods. But if you're a cigarette company, you might want to actually increase your price so that people, you can make more revenue and you can do these by just putting in some simple equations. I'm not going to get into that because you need to come to class for that also. And also another reason why PED is so important, especially in economics, is because the governments use that to levy taxes in the first place. The government is going to put indirect taxes on products and they always do. It's not like they're going to, they always do. And to know to what extent they should be taxing certain products, they need to know about price elasticity of demand. Now, if, again, if this didn't make sense, feel free to reach out to us. All right, we're always here to help you. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about price elasticity of supply. Again, that's going to be quicker relatively because you need to know these concepts very clearly. And again, the determinants of price elasticity of demand are pretty much the same as the determinants of price elasticity, uh, as the theory of demand. Substitutions of goods, if two goods are substitutable, they're, they're relatively more elastic than inelastic. If two goods are, if, it's, if there's a trend, or if there's a fashion of some sort, the elasticity will vary. And of course, time and weather, all these factors come into play as well. Read your essential books as well. And again, if you have any questions, just reach out to us. See you guys next week. Peace out.